and welcome back to Charlie's House Call Auto Repair. Today we've got a 2011 Toyota Highlander to do some rear brakes on. A 2011 Toyota Highlander. Doing some rear brakes in this car today. And we're doing our code scan as usual. A couple of faults in here. Let's see. Stability malfunction or startability malfunction. Okay. Hmm. Current and history. That is about. Uh, we'll need to look into that. E e trying to do a system malfunction. Okay, so we'll be looking into those for him. Connection lost. Yeah, interesting. Okay, let's get into the brakes. And 154,302 miles on the clock. Dust build up, a little bit of grease in there. Shouldn't be too bad. Right, same thing on this side. Nothing looks metal to metal. So it's just going to be, he wants new rotors because they were warped. It's going to be pulsating in the brake pedal but not in the steering wheel. And that brake lining is getting kind of low, so we're going to go ahead and replace the rotors and the pads. Go get some gloves. Bracket bolts are 17 millimeter. Rusty too. Yeah. Brakes are worn evenly, top to bottom, in and out. A lot of glitter all over the place from them dragging a bit. But they do move. Pins, pins move okay. As tight as that is, it feels like the parking brake is dragging. So that's a coarser thread.
pot and pop. <laughs> Brakes are stuck. Oh no. The owner. I can discuss options. I wish I thought that was the owner. Howdy. I can hardly hear you. Okay, well. Had I not spent an hour trying to get that freaking lug nut off, um, I've got I just got done fighting with both of the rotors. They they're they're both off now. The parking brake shoes look okay. Um, they're really really thin, but parking brakes usually are. Um, now the amount of time that it's going to take me to recondition everything, I'm not going to be done by 11:30, but. If you need the vehicle right now, I can just throw this all back together again and then hit it again later on. Um, it, it, probably, probably about an hour. Okay. Okay. Well, the owner's on a time schedule, and he's going to figure out if I've got the hour that I need to recondition everything and put it all back together, or whether or not he needs the vehicle right away, and I'm just going to throw this back together again and hit it again in the near future here's the the brake pads themselves are okay they look a little bit oily the rotors are, like you said they're warped but that's not a tragedy everything's going to come back apart easier the next time around uh, so just going to wait on them to call and see what happens in the meantime i'm going to go clean up the other side yeah the verdict is in He's got to be someplace in about 40 minutes, so there's no way with after fighting with the lug nut and everything else that I've got enough time to get this done today. But I've got the back, the parking brake backed off, so it's not going to drag on him anymore. Um, I don't know why it was so tight to begin with, but uh, we'll try to get to that issue next time around. We'll pick back up where we left off later on this evening. training pad. Right here we don't trash the driveway. Some tools down on it. Keep it from blowing away.
push the piston a little bit. Have our hook. Right through the ear. Find a little place to put it. Just shove it back and out of the way. Those are pretty good. Pop this little rubber piece out. I need to save that for the other rotor. Get in here. Get these loosened up. Too bad. A little, a little bit crusty in there though, but everything moves okay. Slide pins move okay. That one's a little stiff. Okay, so that one's going to need some attention. Get the clips out of here. We need to clean up this bracket, remove all the rust and scaling from underneath inside here and in here where the, all this hardware makes contact. You see all that rust? We've got to clean this up so that the new pieces fit in here without being so tight that they squeeze the ears of your brake pads. So, let's get this rotor on. I already loosened it up earlier, as you saw. That's off. Inspect the brake linings. Well, the brake linings are looking okay. Keep in mind that... Uh, Parking brakes are generally a lot thinner than regular uh, rear drum brakes. So these are even. They are not worn down to a millimeter or less. They're about one and a half to two millimeters, which is acceptable. So we can go ahead and just basically clean this all off, spray it down a little bit, and put the new rotor on. Just in case you've never seen this trick done before, I just got to thinking I should show you guys. It's a six by one and a half millimeter or one and a half thread pitch, uh, six millimeter bolt. And these fit right in these little holes in your rotor, just like that. And what they'll do, what they do, is they allow you to use that bolt to push your rotor off in the in the event that it's stuck on the hub. If you pull on it, okay. If you pull on this and you feel like this springy, it pulls it back. It won't let you take it off. Don't go any further with this bolt right here. What you want to do is remove the little rubber plug that sits right here. That's this little rubber plug right here. You need to remove that. You need to rotate your rotor. So that this is down at the bottom, and there's a little adjuster down here. I'll get you an angle on that. Now, looking at your hub, you get down underneath, and you get that adjuster right here. You rotate this, and so that the top comes out towards you, and that will loosen up your parking brake so that you can remove the drum. This works the same way on a regular drum brake as well. You just loosen up this piece right here by pulling the out the top of it out towards you. You access it through that little hole. Now we've already wire brushed all of this, um, sprayed some fluid film on it to keep it from rusting up. So we're going to grab the new rotor. Nice, fancy Bosch rotors, good quality. And these don't feel like they have a film on them. This just looks like a nickel plating to keep it from rusting. So we don't need to... That's Eric's thing anyways. 
I'll go ahead and put this back on. Now we gotta be careful when we put these on in this particular vehicle. You got your two screws right here. You got the two screw holes right here for extracting it that, that have to line up a certain way. And this hole right here has to be able to get through one of these so that you can adjust your parking brake. So look for the witness marks. Both of the witness marks are underneath these studs. So we'll turn it this way. So these witness marks are in the same spot. We'll go ahead and put the new rotor on. If you want to put a lug nut on here to help keep everything sturdy, you can. I forgot my gloves again. So let's go clean this up and go get some gloves. All right, let's go ahead and get this cleaned up a little bit. No oil, but I left fingerprints all over it, so. Don't put your little rubber piece back in just yet because you're going to be needing to adjust. Actually, why don't we just adjust that right now? And again, your little adjusters down here. We're going to be tightening this up, so we need to push the top inward. And you just access it through this hole, which is right here on the rotor. And what you want to do is just adjust this to the point where you almost have to struggle to slide this on. And right now it's still got quite a lot of slop in it. So we'll go and adjust it some more. Still a little, a little sloppy. I'm just pushing in on the little tabs up at the top and making the star wheel turn. Okay, now we're to the point where it's it's a little stiff going on. You don't want to push it or force it because you'll get it stuck, which I may have just done. All right, we'll be back in a second. Greasy prints all over it again. There. Pretty as new. Okay, now let's get this down to the bottom. Right now it's probably actually really fine, but what I want to show you guys is remember how this works. You know, in on the top to tighten it. I have to feel around in here a little bit to find that adjuster. Okay, there's the adjuster. Okay, now what I've done is I've gone and I've tightened it up. I've actually over tightened it. But now you can't get this thing to, hardly to move. So what you want to do is from this point, uh, as snug as this is right now, I'd say back it off about five, five or six clicks. So find that little wheel in there again. And push down on it. 
One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now you can still take it back off. Now let's see. With the two witness marks on this side. Then go ahead and put your little rubber piece back in. Do not forget this. Now, we need to go ahead and get this bracket cleaned up and get these pins freed up. Okay, let's take the caliper bracket and we'll start with the stiff pin. Pull the boot down off the pin and pull straight out on the pin. In case it came out relatively easily, didn't expect that it would. And we'll go ahead and grab some brake cleaner, spray that down in the hole. Again, safety glasses, or well, in this case, they cheat regular glasses. But do not aim the bore towards your face. Aim it away and fill it up with a little bit of brake cleaner. Take your gun cleaning brush. And just basically, just, you know, work all the grease that's in there loose. Work it around inside. Get everything clean. And dump this onto either your pet trainer or a cloth. And then give it a rinse. Aiming upward. Away, away, away from you. Rinse that out. Now wipe the pin down. You get a little piece of rubber on the bottom of this, so you got to be very careful with this. If this piece of rubber is cracked, torn, unevenly worn, swollen, stretched out, or anything, you need to replace it. It means somebody used the wrong kind of lubricant on it. What we're going to do now is use Silaglide. It's a brake lubricant, silicone based. Let's put some of this onto the pin. You, know, you don't have to put too, too much on there. That's probably a little much, but I work it around. I take, go around the edge like this. So that you're coating the inside of the boot. That helps the boot to keep from drying out. And then rotate your pin as you push it in. All the way to the bottom. And then you pull back out and there's your wrinkle wrinkle. And just repeat that on the other side. The other side doesn't have the rubber, the rubber piece on the bottom of it. So this one's easier. And this one's got a little bit of rust in the top of it. So we're going to wire brush that, get that cleaned up. Okay. Like that, we'll take it, clean it off. And now it doesn't look all nasty and yucky and rusty. I can go ahead and put some grease on this one. Ah, we forgot to clean this out. Let's get that taken care of. Brush. seconds to dry. A little more grease on this. And go ahead and slide 
slide that down in. Grease around the inside of the boot. And go ahead and make sure to try to get all the grease inside. There's a wrinkle, wrinkle, good seal. Now we can go ahead and clean up this part right here. usually try to figure out some kind of a way that I can hold this pretty snugly and I can get a good grip at the same time. Again, safety goggles because these things will throw little pieces all over the place. Now the parts that are critical on these down in the valleys right here and across this top right here. We're going to file this just a little to smooth it. There's a little burrs or anything like that. Against, against the front edge, against the back edge. So it looks like that. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Like that. Clean it up a little bit more with a file. Make sure you don't reshape metal or take metal off. You're just smoothing things out and getting the rust off of it. Just like that. Now we're gonna take some anti seize. This stuff. Get it's on your fingers. From that point on, you're finger painting everything. So, be careful with this stuff. You don't need to use a lot of it either. You just basically just coat this edge right here, here, and then get down the side here, along the back side, the front side, across the bottom. Very light coating. You don't want big globs of this that are going to come out when you put the hardware clips in. Just enough to keep it from getting rusty, keep stuff from getting inside of it. Get a lot of excess, take it off. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I've actually got more than enough right now. Same thing. Front edge, side. So the other one. Enough, just enough to coat it. Now, I already touched that, and I already touched that. So, this stuff literally gets everywhere really quickly. So, be careful with this stuff, but it does an excellent job. It's called the Tin Man Effect. All right. Now, we're going to take this, grab the brake pads, it's right here also Bosch, not a sponsor, get this opened up, now if this is the first time that you're doing brakes, there's a little information sheet in here, sometimes basic instructions, um, using the abutment clips, this is the first time you're doing it, refer to this information. Don't be afraid of it. Every once in a while you'll find something even an expert didn't know. And go ahead and take your hardware clips and snap them down into place. Try to start in the center. Same thing on both sides. Make sure they're seated all the way down in. 
the only part that's going to be really seating is just this little part in the part in the front that pinches. And I'll go ahead and take the bracket, just the way it is, and no angling. You lubricate these in here, you'll attract all sorts of stones, dirt, salt, stuff that'll make your brake pads get stuck. Here, stainless steel, nothing's going to stick to it. Do not lubricate it. Just take the bracket now, put it on. Grab some blue thread locker. That way I won't lose it again. And just one drop. Like that. And go ahead and find the hole and get that started in there. Same thing with the top one. One drop. Put your cap back on so your thread locker doesn't dry up on you. Find a little hole, get it started. Same thing on the top. Find the hole, get it started. Now because you've got thread locker on it, work it back and forth a little bit, come back out a little bit with it, go back in. So you try to get some of that thread lock onto the rusty part of the bolt. Wiggle the caliper bracket, slug the bolts up, once you got them snug, go ahead and tighten them down with the wrench. And go ahead and put that set of brake pads in. Now, I just noticed, ah, we do have clips down in the bottom. With the little squeal clips, you want to put those back on. Why do I only have one? They gave me one clip. Are you kidding? One clip. Do both sides. Okay, well maybe we can get the clip off the old one. These brakes are the same inside and out. There's no inner or outer, right or left. They're all the same thickness, all the same shape. There's no, no differences. So two for this side, two for the other side. Go ahead and put the outboard in. Supposed to be making this look easy and this isn't working. There we go. Now, the inboard one. Is, oh, good. This one here had a clip in it. Let's clean this off. Take this right here and we're gonna snap it onto the little little edge right here. Snap it right into that. And then we're gonna take that brake pad and we're gonna put it in here. This is the leading edge. The wheel rotates this way. So this is the leading edge. Make sure that they move. Now this part that I'm about to do right now, you don't really need to do, but it is recommended just so that you can refresh your, refresh your brake fluid. What I'm going to do is, before I push this piston in, let's get this fuck up out of here. Before I push this piston in, I clean up around it a little bit, make sure there's no loose debris on it. Check the inside of the ears, no loose debris there either. Okay, now, what I'm going to do is follow the brake line, it goes all the way over here, a pair of line, pl line pliers, in this case they're just vice grips with rubber hoses around it to protect it. You don't want it to the point where you have to squeeze hard.
There you go. Because if you have to squeeze it hard, you'll damage the hose. So, now, that's taken care of. We're going to come over here to this bleeder screw. Get this little cap off. It can be a little, a little tricky. But they're good to have on there because it will usually help to keep your, your bleeder from getting all rusted up. Push it up and off. 10 millimeter on this one. Now what I like to do is get my bleeder hose. Hopefully this will fit on it. Alright, cool. Okay. Grab a old container of brake fluid. Double check that your reservoir, well, you don't have to worry about the reservoir right now because that's not going to go down. But we're going to loosen this up. Now what I like to do is grab a solid object, small hammer, not a big heavy one, small hammer or wrench handle that I use as a hammer for everything, and tap on the bleeder screw. You've got a better chance of breaking it loose, tapping on it, than you do trying to brood it out because you'll twist it right off and break it. That was really easy. Okay, now with that loose, I'm going to tip it so that this is the lowest point. So if there's any sediment or anything like that in here, all of the heavier stuff goes right to the bottom. And we're going to grab our piston compression tool. I'm giving one of these away really soon. Slide that in. Just basically, you just need to hook underneath the edge. You need to back it up just a little bit. Hook on the edge, just like that, and then push your piston back in. Might have to open the bleeder a little bit. There we go. As soon as you get that bleeder open enough, this thing will just start going right in. Bring the piston all the way back. Be very careful to watch, see if any part of this is bubbling up. You don't want air trapped behind it because that will end up pushing it against the brake pad and it will ruin the seal. Then the piston will fail. And then go ahead and tighten the bleeder back up. Then remove your screw or your, the tool. Now, slide that down. Make sure it's snug. You can take your bleeder hose off now at this point. Take the wrench off, clean up the brake fluid, take your little cap, put just a dab of grease in it, just a little bit. That will really help in the long run to keep that bleeder screw from getting rusted in there, and then pop it back on. Grab your bracket bolts, bracket to caliper bolts. We're going to put a drop of thread locker on these as well. Splashing it all over the place. One drop. One drop. Cap back on. This stuff will dry out. And go ahead and put your two caliper bolts back in. Now the ears on these pins, you may have to orient these in a specific way to get them to go in, in place. Run your bolts all the way down in. Top and bottom. And these are 14 millimeter. Go ahead and snug those up. Back, double check your work, make sure your caliper bracket bolts are tight.
check your bracket bolts or your caliper bolts. Okay, everything's all back together. Your clips are in place, brake pads are in place. They're really narrow brake pads. They fit in there pro properly. Everything else fits properly. Oh, this side is now done. Actually, now we go over to the other side, do the same thing. Don't forget when you're done, pump the brake pedal a couple of times. Get your brake pedal back nice and firm before you try moving the vehicle. Put your wheels back on, back on. This is how you do the rear brakes in a Toyota Highlander. This is 2011. And if you guys like that one, Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget that notification bell. And just remember, you got no more excuses. Pick up those wrenches. And don't forget to make sure your brake fluid's full. If you want to screw a uh, lug nut on here to tighten the caliper up, or if you want to tighten.